Hey, it's Marks Washington, MTC Media, with um, the extra uh, information to our latest uh, Forgotten Nights, Holmes and Norton. Just to kind of set it up, it's, it's also in the article, but just to kind of set it up, um, we got here in a strange way. Uh, Norton uh, fought uh, Young for a WBC title eliminator with the promise that the winner would face Muhammad Ali, and it would have been the fourth installment of Ali Norton. But what ended up happening was Ali was fighting Leon Spinks, and the WBC went ahead and sanctioned that fight. Well, the unthinkable happened. Spinks defeated Ali in that first fight. And then the promise was the winner of that fight would fight Norton. But then Spinks decided that he wanted an immediate rematch with Ali. And so the WBC retroactively made the young Norton fight a title fight, which is how Norton got the title. When Spinks fought Ali the second time around, that was only for the WBA title because the WBC title had been stripped. So that meant that Norton now had the championship title belt and now would take on the winner of Ernie Shavers and Larry Holmes. Holmes beat Shavers convincingly. And back then, those fights were 12 rounds, but championship fights were always 15. So now to set it up, Holmes fights Shavers in March and then turns around to have to fight Norton in June. You just don't see that in boxing anymore. But it ended up being one of the best heavyweight championship fights in history. And it does not get enough love, guys. You got to take a look at this fight. Now, with Holmes being the challenger, he comes out hot. And I'm going to explain my scorecard and what the official scorecards were. He came out hot. Uh, good movement, stay behind the jab, even though it was a lot of just one jab. He's like popping it, popping it, popping it. A little bit later, he came behind it, comboed, got back out. But his movement was following, was giving Norton all kinds of problems. Because the only thing Norton was doing was following him around the ring. He wasn't cutting off the ring. He wasn't trying to get in the counter. He wasn't doing any of those things. He wasn't trying to jab his way in. He just ate a bunch of Holmes jabs and the occasional... A combo and that happened for about the first five rounds before Norton did what you know you would think they wouldn't take five rounds to do is as Holmes movement started to me getting sloppier in the first five rounds Holmes moved with a purpose it gave him the angles and then he'd take quick advantage of the angle and he wasn't doing this in the sixth round this time around Holmes was moving but wasn't moving effectively. And when you combine that with Norton actually jabbing his way in, next thing you know, this fight starts to change. And as we go through the middle rounds, Norton is landing the better shots. Holmes is becoming more and more inactive. As we go into those championship rounds, those 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and in that, at the 13th round, definitely was Holmes' best round of the fight. I mean, he beat and battered Norton across the ring. And then, you know, you thinking Norton's done. But then Norton comes back and wins the 14th. And then it sets up the epic 15th round, one of the best, one of the most entertaining rounds in heavyweight boxing history is that 15th round between uh, Norton and Holmes. And I gave the 15 round of Holmes. I mean, they just, Holmes was hitting Norton with these big shots. Norton was coming back, and Holmes was a big shot, hit Norton with a hook so hard. I mean, Norton hit Holmes with a hook so hard, Holmes' mouthpiece came out. I mean, those guys were throwing bolos. I gave Holmes the 15th round. So if you look at the official scorecards, it was 143, 142 Holmes, 143, 142 Norton. 143, 142 for the challenger, Larry Holmes, and new heavyweight champion of the world. 
I scored the fight 143-142 for Norton. Now, I will say, in rounds that were truly toss-up rounds, round one, I gave the homes. Round three, I gave the homes. Eight, nine, and ten were definitely toss-up rounds, and I gave all three of those to Norton. Uh, round 12 was a toss-up round. I gave the Norton, and round 15 was a toss-up round, and I gave that to Holmes. So, uh, on my scorecard, I would say there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven toss-up rounds. Five I gave to Norton, two I gave to Holmes. So, my scorecard being 143, 142 Norton, in any of those rounds, in any of those five rounds that I gave to Norton, you could justify giving those rounds to Holmes. And next thing you know, it, it flips the card. That's how close and that's how good this fight was. So if you have a chance, go back and take a look up. Please follow MTC with Mook.com or you can follow the Making the Cup with Mook subsite uh, on all of our um social media handles which is mtc with mook please give us a follow especially on youtube we could use a lot more um a lot more follows on subscriptions on that so please subscribe and on youtube is making the cut with mook just stick it in there and it'll come up and, and hit the subscribe button thank you for joining us on our latest episode of forgotten nights this is marcus washington mtc media